Hello everybody, this is Chris Morosky, and this is a short video on mammary gland development. The content of this video is taken exclusively from an article written by Hector Macias and Lindsay Hink from the Department of Molecular, Cell, and Developmental Biology at the University of California, Santa Cruz. The title of the article is Mammary Gland Development, and it was published in 2012 in the Wiley Interdisciplinary Review of Developmental Biology. The goals and objectives of this video are as follows. Review the critical steps involved in the embryonic development of the mammary bud and rudimentary duct formation. Describe the hormonal influences during puberty on the development of the mammary gland. Outline the effect of pregnancy hormones on the development of a lactation-competent mammary gland. Understand the various factors associated with the two stages of mammary gland involution following lack of demand at weaning. Mammary glands or epidermal appendages evolve from apocrine sweat glands. They are a complex organ of different cell types. These include epithelial cells, adipocytes, vascular endothelial cells, fibroblasts, and immune cells. There are two main epithelial cell types. These are the basal cells, which include the myoepithelial cells, and the luminal cells, which include the ducts and lumen. There are three main stages of development, and these are the embryonic, pubertal, and reproductive, and we're going to review all three of those in this video. Embryonic Development There are two main compartments when considering the embryonic development of the mammary gland. The ectoderm gives rise to the epithelial compartment. The mesoderm gives rise to the stromal compartment. Milk lines are paired, multi-layered ectoderm stripes that run on the ventral surface of the embryo from hind limb to forelimb buds. The milk lines form during the first trimester and give rise to a single pair of plaque codes. Importantly, inductive signals between ectoderm to mesoderm and vice versa influence development. Early embryonic research shows that mesenchyme contains critical inductive signals that produce, through a series of reciprocal epithelial mesenchymal interactions, epithelium that is progressively restricted along the mammary lineage. In turn, the epithelium influences mesenchymal maturation such that the mammary mesenchyme condenses to form a few layers of fibroblast-rich cells closely surrounding the epithelial rudiment and distinct from the fat pad precursor mesenchyme, which develops from more deeply located subcutaneous mesenchymal cells. There are several key players when considering mammary line specification. Wnt. Wnt is a mammary line-specific signal. Wnt10b is an essential signal in ectoderm mammogenesis. Wnt3, Wnt6, and Wnt10b are signals from flanking ectoderm. Wnt5a and Wnt11 are signals from underlying flank mesenchyme. TBX3. TBX3 is an early factor responsible for dorsal ventral pattern of plaque codes. TBX3 is expressed in mesenchyme underlying the presumptive mammary line and later accumulates in the plaque codes. Bone morphogenic protein 4, or BMP4. BMP4 is expressed on the ventral border of the mammary line. BMP4 regulates the ventral extent of TBX3 expression. BMP4 and TBX3 antagonize each other. TBX3 and BMP4 both regulate and restrict the expression of WNT10B, and therefore where the mammary line delineates and eventually develops into the placodes. Fibroblast Growth Factors, FGFs. FGF10B is made in the thoracic somites underlying the mammary line. FGF10B binds FGFR2B receptor in the milk line to regulate the expression of WNT10B. FGF10B positions TBX signals in the area of nascent placo development. GLI3. GLI-3 is a transcription factor that generally functions as a transcription repressor in the hedgehog signaling pathway. GLI-3 positively regulates FGF-10 expression. Neuregulin-3, NRG-3. NRG-3 is expressed in mesenchyme underlying the presumptive mammary line. NRG-3 plays a role in modulating cell adhesion that promotes transduction of FGF-10B signals and development of mammary gland placoed epithelium. The milk line is apparent between the forelimbs and hindlimbs that demarcate the rostral and caudal extension of the line. Specification of the line requires early wind signaling in the epithelium and in the mesenchyme that flanks the milk line. 
TBX3 expression is required at early time points vertically under the line and it controls subsequent Wnt signaling within the line that is required for the development of memory placodes. TBX3 expression is regulated by FGF10 that emanates from somites underlying the line as well as Wnt signaling in the flank and BMP4 signaling localized at the ventral border. During the next stage of development, mammary placodes expand to form a round ball of cells that descends into the underlying mesenchyme. As this sphere of cells continues to descend, stalks are formed connecting the mammary bud to the epidermis. In humans, instead of a single epithelial sprout extending from the mammary bud, several sprouts form, creating multiple mammary trees that unite at the nipple. Surrounding the epithelium is the condensed mesenchyme comprising a thin layer of fibroelastic cells. A solid core of epithelial cells extends from the mammary bud and grows through this condensed mesenchyme into the fat pad precursor mesenchyme, which at this stage is a small collection of preadipocytes. Once the epithelial sprout reaches the fat pad, it begins to branch by equal division of the terminal bud. This dichotomous branching yields a rudimentary ductal system of 10 to 15 branches that is generated without hormal input and remains largely quiescent until puberty. Before embryonic development concludes, two additional morphologic processes occur, formation of the ductal lumen and generation of the nipple structure. Studies performed in cultured mammary cells grown in a three-dimensional matrix have implicated three processes in mammary lumen formation, apoptosis, autophagy, and cellular remodeling. Nipple generation occurs by modifications of the skin overlying the primary mammary mesenchyme and involves thickening of the epidermis, suppression of hair follicles, and generation of a nipple sheath from keratinocytes at the site where the primary duct connects to the skin surface. A very important factor in mammary bud and rudimentary tract formation is parathyroid hormone-related protein, also known as PTHLH. PTHLH is produced in mammary epithelium. It signals a G-protein-coupled receptor, type 1 PTH, PTHLH receptor, also known as PTH1R, which is expressed in the mammary mesenchyme. Epithelial PTHLH through its mesenchymal receptor, PTH1R, modulates Wnt signaling and therefore cell fate. The effects of PTHLH require BMP4 signaling, which is augmented through the upregulation of the BMP receptor 1A, also known as BMPR1A, by PTHLH in the mesenchyme. PTHLH also increases the expression of transcription factor MSX2 in the mesenchyme, which is a regulatory event required for PTHLH suppression of hair follicle formation around the nipple. Mammary placodes expand into a ball of cells that descends into the underlying mesenchyme. Parathyroid hormone-related protein, PTHLH, signals from the epithelium to the mesenchyme to increase the expression of bone morphogenic protein receptor 1A. Bone morphogenic protein 4 expressed in the mesenchyme signals through BMPR1A to MSX2 and inhibits hair follicle formation at the developing nipple sheath. The mammary epithelium grows into a small, simple tree-like structure containing an open lumen and remains in this form until birth. Altogether, PTHLH signaling underscores the importance of epithelial mesenchymal interactions in regulating processes such as mammary bud formation. PTHLH produced by the epithelia, acts on its receptor, expressed in the surrounding mesenchyme, to modulate Wnt and BMP signaling and induce the production of a specialized condensed mesenchyme that maintains mammary epithelial cell fate. This triggers nipple sheath formation in the overlying epidermis and initiates ductal outgrowth. By the end of the embryonic development, these and other regulatory processes generate a rudimentary ductal system that provides the framework for mammary outgrowth during puberty. Pubertal development. At birth, the gland is just a rudimentary ductal system, yet it is competent to produce milk. Fetal exposure to maternal hormones can cause milk expression in human babies, which is sometimes referred to as witch's milk. As these endocrine influences subside, the gland undergoes a period of allometric growth, keeping up with overall body development until puberty when expansive proliferation occurs, filling the fat pad under the influence of hormones and growth factors. Terminal end buds are club-shaped structures at the tips of growing ducts that penetrate the fat pad, driven by the proliferation of a single layer of cap cells at the tip of the terminal end buds and by the underlying preluminal epithelium. The primary ductal structure is generated by terminal end bud bifurcation and is regulated by the surrounding stroma. 
Cap cells of the terminal end bud differentiate into myoepithelial cells, forming the outer layer of the lobular ductal bilayer that encircles inner luminal cells. Secondary branches sprout laterally from the primary ducts until a tree-like pattern of ducts occupies up to 60% of the available fatty stroma, leaving abundant space for the infilling that will occur under the influence of pregnancy hormones. Under cyclic ovarian stimulation, short tertiary branches will form, but full blossoming of the alveolar buds into units capable of milk secretion occurs only under the influence of pregnancy hormones. In humans, the pubertal breast contains a similarly extensive mammary tree, but the lateral branches lead to terminal ducts that give rise to terminal ductal lobular units comprising numerous blind-ended ductules called asini. These asini are embedded in fibrolastic intralobular stroma that is far more pronounced in the human breast than the adipocytes-rich stroma surrounding the branches of the rodent mammary tree. Studies performed as early as the 1930s demonstrated that extracts from the pituitary gland regulate mammary gland formation, with researchers observing enhanced mammogenesis and lactogenesis upon its administration. Two hormones were identified that are responsible for these effects, growth hormone and prolactin. Later studies showed that mammary pubertal development was disrupted in mice lacking growth hormone, insulin-like growth factor 1, or estrogen receptor alpha, genes that mediate pathways regulating ductal outgrowth and morphogenesis. In contrast, development of the adolescent gland occurs normally in mice lacking prolactin or progesterone receptors, genes that mediate signaling pathways regulating alveologenesis. The main players in postnatal development include growth hormone, which is secreted from the pituitary gland. Growth hormone is an important global regulator of mammary gland development, Growth hormone's effects are mediated almost entirely through insulin-like growth factor 1. Insulin-like growth factor 1. IGF-1 is essential for mammary gland development, downstream of growth hormone. The current model is that growth hormone signals through growth hormone receptor, GHR, in stromal fibroblasts, producing IGF-1, which then signals the mammary epithelium. IGF-1 is both produced in the mammary stroma with a paracrine effect and in the liver with an endocrine effect. Estrogen. Estrogen is a membrane-soluble ligand made in the ovary which activates gene expression through intracellular receptors. Estrogen is a critical regulator of pubertal mammary development. Estrogen is responsible for the tremendous surge in the growth occurring during this period that generates a functional mammary gland. Estrogen stimulates mammary ductal growth, and estrogen receptors are broadly expressed in both epithelial and stromal components of the mammary gland. Estrogen receptor alpha, known as ESR1, is the major receptor operating during ductal morphogenesis. Estrogen and ESR1 work together with IGF1 to regulate ductal morphogenesis. Estrogen also functions during pregnancy in the growth and maintenance of alveolar cells. Altogether, the studies on growth hormone, IGF1, and estrogen have led to a model in which pituitary growth hormone induces the production of IGF1 by the liver. These factors, together with locally produced IGF-1 in the mammary stroma and epithelium, act via the receptors in the mammary gland to stimulate terminal end bud formation and ductal branching. Estrogen acts in concert with IGF-1 to generate the burst of proliferation required for ductal morphogenesis. Also important in postnatal development is amphiregulin, also known as AREG. AREG is a member of the epidermal growth factors family. AREG is strongly induced in mammary epithelial cells by estrogen at puberty, but this transmembrane protein binds to the epidermal growth factor receptor that is located at a distance on stromal cells across the basement membrane. The transmembrane metalloprotease ADAM17 releases AREG from mammary epithelial cells, allowing for the peregrine activation of stromal EGFR. Fibroblast growth factor, also known as FGFs. FGFs mediate the mitogenic signal from the AREG EGFR complex. FGFs are upregulated in stroma at puberty, and FGFR2 is required on mammary epithelial cells for ductal elongation. Altogether, multiple lines of investigations have led to a model in which estrogen binding to ASR1 in sensor cells induces the expression of AREG, which is released from the cell surface by ADAM17. Cleaved AREG makes its way, by unknown mechanisms, across the basement membrane 
to stroma fibroblasts that in turn stimulate cell proliferation through FGFR2 expressed on the mammary epithelium. While positive factors that elicit growth are clearly important for creating the ductal architecture, negative regulators are equally important and particularly crucial in the mammary gland, which has open ductal architecture characterized by ample space between branches for pregnancy-induced alveolar infilling. Transforming growth factor beta-1, TGF-beta-1, has been identified as a major negative regulator of mammary branching and ductal elongation, and it restricts end bud bifurcation and branch formation by limiting epithelial proliferation. In addition to members of the major growth factor families, a host of additional secreted proteins have been identified that regulate mammary morphogenesis. Netrin-1, SLIT-2, and RELIN are all proteins that regulate axon guidance and cell migration during neural development. These factors also regulate mammary ductal morphogenesis. Putting it all together, during pubertal development, the terminal end buds grow through the mammary fat pad, fueled by cell proliferation. Growth hormone regulates cell proliferation by inducing the expression of insulin-like growth factor 1 in both the liver and mammary stroma. IGF-1 acts together with estrogen secreted from the ovary to induce epithelial cell proliferation. Estrogen signaling through its receptor, ESR1, acts via a paracrine fashion to stimulate the release of epidermal growth factor family member, AREG, which proceeds to bind its receptor on stromal cells and induce expression of FGFs. FGFs, in turn, stimulate luminal cell proliferation. Other factors such as TGF-beta-1, RELIN, SLIT-2, and NETRIN-1 contribute to mammary architecture by either positively or negatively regulating cell proliferation or maintaining cell-to-cell -cell interactions. Reproductive Development The mammary gland must undergo numerous changes to prepare for lactation. These changes require both gland maturation and alveologenesis and are primarily under the control of progesterone and prolactin. The first transformation of pregnancy is a tremendous increase in secondary and tertiary ductal branching, providing ductal arbors for the secondary transformation, alveolar development. Proliferating epithelial cells generate alveolar buds that progressively cleave and differentiate into distinctive alveoli, which become milk-secreting lobules during lactation. Interstitial adipose tissue disappears as the proliferating epithelial cells occupy the interductal spaces. Increased vascularization occurs, and by mid-pregnancy, each alveolus is surrounded by a basket-like network of capillaries. By late pregnancy, the alveoli encompasses the majority of the fat pad and shows some secretory activity as pregnancy approaches term. Some of these changes also occur during menstrual cycles when the gland exhibits mild proliferation and differentiation that includes the limited expansion of milk proteins, followed by involution. One of the main players of pregnancy and lactation is progesterone. Progesterone is responsible for the extensive side branching and alveologenesis required to create a lactation-competent gland. In combination with prolactin, progesterone also promotes the differentiation of specialized structures, alveoli, which synthesize and secrete milk during lactation. Only epithelial progesterone receptors are required for side branching and alveologenesis. The progesterone receptor isoform, IB, is uniquely required in the mammary gland. Progesterone induces the release of rankle, which plays a crucial role in the downstream signaling of progesterone-mediated pro-growth response. Prolactin. Prolactin is a small polypeptide hormone produced by the posterior pituitary. Prolactin binds to a member of the class 1 cytokine receptor superfamily, resulting in activation of a number of signaling pathways, JAK-STAT, MAP kinase, and phosphoinositide 3 kinase. Prolactin receptor JAK2 STAT5 pathway culminates in the expression of milk protein genes. These are casein beta and whey acidic protein. Downstream from the progesterone receptor is rankle. Negative regulation of prolactin is supplied by the suppression of cytokine signaling, SOX1 through 3 family, through a negative feedback loop. Rankle. Rankle is a member of the tumor necrosis family ligand superfamily. Rankle signals through rank to regulate a broad range of physiologic processes, including osteoclastogenesis and bone remodeling. Given its role in regulating skeletal calcium release, it is not surprising that rankle plays such an essential role in regulating alveologenesis, the first step in transmitting maternal calcium to the infant. Rankle is induced by progesterone and prolactin. Progesterone through rankle increases alveologenesis. 
prolactin through rank all rank increases proliferation through cyclin delta 1. Here we see the events that generate lactation competence during pregnancy. Alveoli develop into milk secreting lobulose regulated by prolactin that works together with progesterone. Both hormones regulate transcriptional programs that include the control of rankle, which signals in a paracrine fashion to stimulate proliferation by upregulating expression of target genes such as cyclin delta 1 through the rank receptor on neighboring cells. Progesterone stimulates secondary and tertiary branching, while prolactin transduces this information through pathways such as those mediated by JAK2 STAT5, whose downstream targets include milk genes, casein beta, and whey acidic protein. Involution The lack of demand at weaning causes milk to stagnate in the mammary epithelium, initiating the process of involution that removes milk producing epithelial cells and remodels the epithelial tree back to a simple ductal architecture. Two phases of involution have been defined. The first is reversible, such that resumption of suckling re-establishes the milk supply. This step is accompanied by apoptosis, alveolar cell detachment, and within 12 hours, the accumulation of shed cells into the lumen. Remarkably, no major morphologic changes occur with this phase of involution, aside from changes in alveolar shape due to milk engorgement. However, at 48 hours, a transition into phase 2 of involution begins and alveoli start to collapse. This phase is irreversible and the milk supply is lost, regardless of whether or not suckling is reinitiated. During this phase, breakdown of the extracellular matrix and activation of proteases induces a second wave of apoptosis. This results in a massive period of tissue remodeling, which by six days leads to the removal of most of the secretory epithelium and its subsequent replacement by adipocytes. Although a few remaining alveoli may persist, the remodel gland is morphologically very similar to the virgin gland, even though it is molecularly distinct with respect to gene expression. Recent studies show that local cues regulate the first phase of involution, including alveolar stretch, the buildup of apoptotic factors in static milk, and disruption of the cell extracellular matrix contacts. An important mediator of the first phase of involution is the STAT protein family. STAT5A and STAT5B both promote PI3 kinase, AKT, cell survival pathways. STAT3, however, inhibits these cell survival pathways. Within 3 to 6 hours of milk stasis, STAT5A and STAT5B become inactive, and STAT3B becomes active. The primary activator of STAT3 is cytokine leukemia inhibitory factor. STAT3 STAT3 directly regulates the expression of two inhibitory subunits of PI3 kinase, P50-alpha and P55-alpha. This leads to the decreased survival cell signaling from PI3 kinase and AKT. IGF-BP5 sequesters IGF-1 in casein micelles. This interferes with IGF-1 pro-proliferating signaling. Finally, STAT3 upregulates expression of cathapsin B and cathapsin L, which results in lysosomal membrane permeabilization. This causes the induction of programmed cell death. The second phase of involution is accompanied by dramatic changes in mammary gland architecture, including the remodeling of the basement membrane, collapse of alveoli, and differentiation of adipocytes. One of the major players of the second stage of involution are serine protease and matrix metalloprotease, or MMPs. These both activate plasminogen and break down the extracellular matrix. They are regulated by tissue inhibitors of metalloproteases, also known as TIMPs. Plasminogen. Plasminogen is made in the liver and circulates as a zymogen in the blood. Calocrine 1, a serine protease located in the mammary gland, activates plasminogen to plasmin. Plasmin is intricately involved in both stages of involution. In the first stage of involution, plasmin contributes to apoptotic processes by disrupting the interactions between cells in the extracellular matrix. In the second phase of involution, plasmin joins with the upregulation of MMP to disrupt the basal lamina. Plasmin also influences the differentiation of adipocytes that is required to replace tissue loss due to apoptosis of epithelial cells. MMPs and plasmin release growth factors to allow the gland to remodel and restructure back to a pre-lactation biology. Upon weaning, the gland is remodeled back to its pre-pregnancy state. 
Phase 1 is reversible and is regulated largely by STAT3, which is induced by Leukemia Inhibitory Factor, LIF, and opposes pro-survival STAT5 signaling by upregulating the expression of numerous proteins including lysosomal proteases, cathapsins, insulin-like growth factor binding protein 5, and two regulatory isoforms of phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase, P50-alpha, and P55-alpha. Cell death and limited proteolysis of the extracellular matrix occurs during this stage as plasminogen is converted to plasmin through the actions of plasma calicrin, yet the alveoli largely retain their shape. This changes during the second phase, which is irreversible and characterized by alveolar collapse and adipocyte differentiation. MMPs are released from their inhibitors, tissue inhibitors of metalloproteinases, and collaborate with plasmin to return the mammary gland to its pre-lactation state by releasing growth factors and remodeling the extracellular matrix. And that's about it, everybody. We finally did it. We were able to, in this video, meet our goals and objectives by reviewing the critical steps involved in the embryonic development of the mammary bud and rudimentary duct formation, describe the hormonal influences during puberty on the development of the mammary gland, outline the effect of pregnancy hormones on the development of a lactation-competent mammary gland, and understand the various factors associated with the two stages of mammary gland involution following lack of demand at weaning. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video educational. Good luck with your studies, and we'll see you soon in class.